All right, guys, it is Tech Sags Rewind. We are presented by T-Mobile. I got a phone all through T-Mobile. Good times there. Make all the calls you want. I called this guy. Uh, actually, I didn't call you on your little vacation. I'll let you be. Uh, how Thank the, you. How are the meese? I didn't see any moose. Um, I was very disappointed, I think, if we just made the right exit or if we would have just stuck to our... I know if we would have stuck to our path because the little family of wild Brandon Jones looking outdoorsmen and their little six year old that like was just scaling this like 60 degree angle like it was nothing when his dad his dad fell and came kind of came rolling down to us which I was immediately like well look look at this amateur but then he starts saying yeah there's moose up there just you know um and he started telling us last week they had seen a mountain lion for the first time um so just don't be there during dusk and all the things that most people, you know, are listening are like, "Wow, oh, hell, I'll do that yet." I get it. You probably had a gun, bear spray, uh, you know, maybe a, a buddy with you. I had a little four foot nine, uh, five foot girl with me and her golden doodle. So we weren't really equipped to fend off anything, but right. I wanted to do it. It just. She was just kind of like, well, I'm going to wait here, go on. She would deny that, but I look, kept looking back, and she's further and further back. I'm not finding anything. I don't even know if we're on the trail. I need a trail with at least a single other human so I just know where I'm going right. to find something. I didn't find crap. But beautiful scenery. We drove all through Colorado. We went to Breckenridge. We went to Estes Park. We drove through the Rocky Mountain National Park. We went to Grand Lake. Went to Red Rock, saw a concert. I got a lot in. Now I kind of, you know, I've never been, I'm more of a beach, you know, Caribbean, Mexico kind of guy. Right. California. Now I've got the the itch to go. Ever since we went and played Colorado and I did like Boulder, which is like nothing for that. Now I really want to go back and go on like, you know, not a camp out. We ain't doing that. But like, some real hikes. Real hikes. Well, we, I'm looking forward to it. You got to come with me. I will do it. I don't know if I will. We hiked over to Kyle Field yesterday. That's how I segue. And we watched the uh, terrible. Is that my worst one? Tell you what, Red Rocks had more steps going up. It's like going up the Kyle Field ramp, but steps going up it than any venue I've ever been to outside of maybe Dodger Stadium, believe it or not. Is, you, you probably cut, but you maybe you was there. media, you probably yeah. had some little tricky entrance, but there's a ton of steps. But going up to Red Rock, I felt like Ace Ventura, you know, when he goes up like in yeah. there in like Asia and he and he throws the slinky down at the end. That's that's what I felt like. I haven't watched Ace Ventura. Kay's no, you've never watched Ace Ventura. I, I don't. I don't like Jim Carrey. I I ended up not liking him. But if you don't watch Ace Ventura like that at at our age, you have a problem. I had a problem. I just didn't you have like, a real problem. I liked him in the Man in the Moon. That was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. That was Jim Carrey's best. Forget about Dumb and Dumber or No, Ace. I don't. I have, I've watched yeah, Dumb and Dumber. It's a sophomoric humor to me. I like, I watch Anchorman I don't Man like laughing. I love Will Ferrell. I don't like Jim Carrey. You've worked here, what, a year plus? Yeah. Um, I, I never surprised you, do I? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, and I'm thinking back, and I'm like, have I heard David laugh? Yes, of I've course. I've seen you have. smile. You're a happy person. I don't do fake laughs. You bring laughs. good energy. I, I like that about you. You don't do fake laugh. <laughs> but I don't know that I've seen you genuinely laugh. Uh, let's see. Dave Chappelle, laugh loud. Seinfeld, every episode, doesn't matter. Okay. Laugh loud. We're on the same page. All right. So Both those kind of things. Eddie Murphy, delirious. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop, even The Golden Child made me laugh. And that's not a very good Golden one. Golden Child. That's not one of the better ones. I, this is Tex Ex Rewind. Sorry. So nine minutes. Oh, in. I thought we were on the radio. We're, it's it's kind of like the radio. We did 22 and 22, Jalen Jones. We're high on Jalen Jones. Uh, the voice of the Ags, Andrew Monica, always a great segment. He was here. Trey Williams is going to be on America's Got Talent. Yeah, he's singing, guys. you got to watch that. It's supposed to be tomorrow. We'll keep you uh, tuned on that because there could be some reasons for that. And this guy was back, and we talked a lot about the uh, open practice yesterday. Tech Sacks Rewind. OB, number 15 is? Jalen Jones. And my friend, we expected big things last year. Um, some injuries kind of derailed him a little bit. I'm expecting a big year out of Jalen Jones. Well, he needs to have one because, um, frankly, I thought he was he was okay last year. I, don't, I didn't think he was uh, a, as good as he should be yeah. last year. And with the guys they have now, when you bring in a Denver Harris and you have a guy like 
Deuce Harmon and, and some other guys that are coming on, uh, you're going to have to play well, I would think, to uh, to maintain that starting job. This team needs to force more turnovers. Um, he led the team last year in interceptions, and he With had two. Two. Yeah, that's that. That's a big area of disappointment um, that A and M does need to get more turnovers. I think they will, but you keep thinking when. Right. You know, a good pass rush and athletic defensive backs are usually the recipe for a lot of interceptions. And uh, they had the good pass rush last year, but the interceptions didn't come. And they didn't, you know, they gave up some big plays. You can look at, for instance, the LSU game-winning touchdown. Was Did the receiver push off of Jalen Jones? He absolutely did. He did. He got away with it. Okay, that happens. But – you got to get to a point where game's on the line. You're going to make that play no matter You're what. You're going to make that play. Doing. Yep. And an elite cornerback will. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, his 2020, 2020 season, excuse me, to me, it gives me so much hope for this year because, A, he's got the NFL size. You look at him, he's just a big, strong dude. Mm-hmm. He's been very intense at practice that I've been at. Um, he can make the plays. He, he did get picked on a little bit last year. Um, this year, they're going to be way more athletic in the back and deeper. They're going to be better in the back. Again, I think what you look at with Jalen Jones is you say, was he a disaster last year? Absolutely not. Was he great? Absolutely not. But was, was he good? Yeah, he was good. He was good. That said, <clears throat> can he be better? Absolutely, he can be. He and will. so you expect him to be. Taking oh, Devon A. Chain out of the backfield and getting the pick in the end zone. Yeah. How, ex- how exciting are those those linebackers? But again, it's not just Coop and Andre White Jr. You've got Tari and Lee. You've got Chris Russell. Again, deep everywhere. Marshall That's- Harris. <laughs> Look at there's, that, yeah. There's there, there's the, the side. The, I, I I get it. Everyone looks the part. I get it, and that's great. Then when you watch, because it's a you know it's a different speed. Mm-hmm. Just on that field, it's a different speed. And, and I said this about to, to my partner, Dave Elmendorf, when Damani Richardson was a freshman. If you didn't look at a roster his freshman year, you'd never know he was a freshman. He didn't look like a freshman. Right. He looked like he belonged, but he had that size. If you didn't have a roster, you would never know which class each of those players are. That, that's the type of talent. And I've got to add this, the character that Jimbo has brought in. Jimbo and his staff has brought in for, for this team. Again, as deep and talented as he's ever had. You say that, and then I look at that tight end group, and I'm wow. thinking to myself, Theodore, it's going to take a couple of years for Theodore. It's not going to take a couple of years for, for Mellon. Nope. Um, he yesterday, along with the size and though his route running, made some beautiful catches. Yeah. Um, he looks like that he may wait because there's so many people here. But it doesn't look like he has to. No, I don't think so. And you know it's got to be a combination of not just the hands, but he's going to have to block because he becomes yeah. the sixth offensive lineman. But, but whether it's him or whether it's Donovan Green or whether it's Jake Johnson or whether it's Blake Smith, you know, you, you forget about Fernando Garza, the guys that they brought in who have a year under their belt mm-hmm. and, have, and have been a part of it. Again, every team has a question. Every, every team has questions. I don't care what team you are. But this, because of fall camp, now some of the questions get answered more questions don't get answered until you play games. But I think for all the young guys, last Wednesday was the excitement day, right? That was day one. Well, how they feel on Thursday? That becomes some of the things that you right. get to put in your memory bank. Okay, day one is so exciting. Okay, day two, we have to go do it again. And we have to go do it again. And that's, the, I think, the special makeup of this group is they can't wait to – every chance they get to compete – they get a chance to go compete. That's why it's been so much fun to watch these practices. Well, let's let's get into it. So uh, I was so happy to hear from you yesterday. A, loved seeing what you were doing there at the USFL, running all over everybody like, like we expected. But uh, then I see this note that you're going to be on America's Got Talent here. Uh, how did this all come together? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I'm, you know, I'm having a great time out here. And, you know, they got us out here in L.A., you know, us and the guys. I'm basically, I'm basically in this this uh, deal called the Players Choir. Uh, we built uh, a brotherhood. You know, uh, it's a bunch, basically a, a bunch of uh, NFL former NFL players who, you know, got together and uh, to create a uh, pretty much a, a sound, one sound. And you know, we're about to we were about to get we're about to get ready to go do that tomorrow. And I'm pretty excited about that. 
Yeah, man, I'm looking at the picture that you guys posted there on America's Got Talent. So this is the second time the Players Choir has been out there. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is the second time, and you know we're looking to uh, win a sec- another another competition, and uh, it's been a fun journey. You know, we've been rehearsing and working hard, and you know this thing and thing. I feel like uh, it, 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 it correlates to football. So. Look, you're our guy, so I, I can brag about you. But uh, you know, you came on this show a year ago, and you, you know, we talked a little bit about your singing. I, I feel like not only in the picture are you the the center focus, but I saw some clips of you. You're like the main singer, right? Like I, mean, I know everybody's singing, but I feel like you get a lot of solos. Right, right, yeah. They, uh, I'm the solo. Well, I'm the lead singer, of course. But they, you know, they all can sing. Those guys are all talented, man. We, it's it's really surreal to even be a part of you know because the, these guys are they have similar journeys and you know we we have the we, we've been on a on a similar road and you know for us to all be here and harmonizing together as men you know that's that's something uh that's priceless you know you you, you don't get that too often who are some of the names uh, any names we'd recognize um uh cameron newton <laughs> but it's not the real it's not the the quarterback Cam Newton. Not, not Cam Newton, the quarterback. Yeah, not Superman. <laughs> Noah Thomas out there, the young guy making – like, I, I'm just – I'm really intrigued by that position because there is a lot of competition and guys that are are, are going to make the others better, as Jimbo says. Yeah, I agree. And, and I felt like he was he was on Yule Keith a lot yesterday, which I think is a good thing. I think that, you know, they're trying to get him ready mm-hmm. because they need – like, he jumps out at me. Now, not as much as Evan Stewart does. Evan Stewart looks like, I mean, I've said it from the day he got here. We all thought that when they signed him. But from the day he got here, like everyone inside the program was like, he's different. Athletically, and just he's just, he's different. Right. He stands out. And then in spring, that's exactly what he did. Now what I've heard is he's better in fall than he was in spring. In terms of just this is a guy now that an early enrolling thing really helped him. He's going to start. He's going to catch a bunch of passes. He's going to be a really key part of the offense. He's going to be a problem down the field. And you saw him make that spectacular catch on pretty good coverage by Brian George Mm -hmm. yesterday. So what Evan can do is finish. And we saw Moose showed he could do that last year to finish the tough catch. That's not easy. Um, But he's also just sprint right past you. And in heat between he and A chain, we saw Devon make a lot of plays in the passing game yesterday, including you know one that would have been a walk in touchdown. Um, Haynes underthrew him on what would have been another walk in touchdown because you got him matched up who, with with Edrin Cooper, who's really fast, and one of the best defensive players the Aggies have. He couldn't keep up with A chain just like those Bama linebackers couldn't, but it was underthrown a little, and Edrin hustled. A chain had to turn and kind of try to catch it like this, kind of like Spiller uh-huh. in the end zone against Colorado, like where you kind of had to slow up and turn. But yeah. Edrian Cooper makes an incredible, probably the play of the day in practice to hustle, get the football, rip it away for an end zone interception. It was, it was that, and and I thought Evans catch were the two, you know, most jaw dropping plays of the day. But uh, you're right, that receiving core is deep, and and we. You're impressed. So many guys did did things to impress, including Yul Keith. But that was and that was without Chris Marshall, who was out of practice. And that was without obviously Anaya Smith, who I think along with so so I look at them trying and trying to get Yul Keith. Is whether it's Yul Keith or Moose, they they have flash like real playmaking skill to me, mm-hmm. right? We saw it with Moose last year. Preston on the other field made a couple of long, you know, he had yeah. a long touchdown catch and a couple other big plays. So, but the, just that raw, that, that explosive home run hitting ability, I see it some in Moose, even though he's not quite as twitchy or fast, but he makes incredible catches. Yul Keith has it. Obviously, A Chain and Anias have it. And Evan Stewart certainly has it. So, when you get that kind of speed and playmaking ability spread out across the field, and they're going to have it at tight end, boy, were those tight ends impressive. All three of All them. All of them, yeah. And, and I'll tell you, 
I'm really impressed with a couple of plays where Donovan Green did a tremendous job blocking, S sprung a couple of nice runs because of he was locked onto his guy and, and drove him, you know, almost to the sidelines. We haven't seen enough of that. You know, Jace was a one and done, never really here long enough to become a blocker. Um, and, and then Weidemeyer, that wasn't certainly wasn't the strength of his game. Right. You think about A&M's offense, and they haven't really had blocking tight ends. They signed the Wood kid, transfer from Arizona in that first year, and uh, he was big and physical, but just, you know, he was, again, a one and done just like Jace. Baylor Cup, he, it's like he got here and he was getting bigger and bigger, and then he just started getting smaller and smaller, became more of like a finesse. He was never a blocking mm -hmm. tight end. They haven't had it. <laughs> that was good, Billy. That was really good. That was, right? That was, oh, man. Finally made him laugh. That was funny. By uh, doing nothing. It's like, fake. subscribe, comment, and fake laugh. <laughs> comment, subscribe, like, hit the button, whatever. All right. I've Let's lost do interest. lunch. Let's do it. Goodbye.